So if you put things in chronological order, it sounds like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were followers of Paul because his writings was first about Jesus Christ. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Right. Don't take my word for it, ladies and gentlemen. Please go look it up yourself. All right? Now, I'm going to play a little game right quick. Just right quick. Just right quick. I, somebody got to be my guinea pig. I got, I got to volunteer. Oh, yeah. Right here. Oh, yeah. Silly game, but I gotta play. No, no, no. Alright. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna whisper something in her ear, and I want her to whisper it in your ear, and then I want you to whisper it in his ear, and then I want you to, hey, look, I'm trying to get y'all to see reality, and I want you to whisper it. We're gonna do it about five people, and let's just see what happened with the story. My point is, the books that were written about Jesus Christ was written 50 to 100 years after his death and burial and resurrection. No one wrote about Jesus during his lifetime. Did everybody hear what I just said? Yes. This man walked on water. Right. He fed 5,000 folk. That's right. right. He did all this stuff, and ain't nobody write about this dude. Well, why not? Um, Something ain't right. Something ain't right. We're going to find out in a minute. Hold on for a minute. About to tell her the secret. I want you to tell her. I want you to tell him. I want you to, and let's see what, what, what it leads to by the time we get to like the 56th person. Y'all ready? Oh, yeah. Okay? Because yeah. after a 50 to 100 year time span, I think the story had changed just a little bit. Don't y'all think so? Yeah, so did, well, let, let's, let's see what happened. Let, let's see what happened. Hold on. Yes, <laughs> Hold on, hold on, we Because he was a lot of different stories. Yeah. Y'all already missed it. He done broke down already. <laughs> okay, stop, bro. What did he just say to you? He said the dog ran across the street and went to my sister's house. Stop right there, that ain't what I said. <laughs> My point, my point is this. <laughs> I said the dog ran across the street and got a bone and went to my sister's house at 7.30. That's what I said. I just made, you know what I'm saying? My point is, <laughs> my point is, this is exactly what goes on in history. So when you're doing your research on history, there's certain things that you have to look at and certain things you have to evaluate to come to an exact conclusion. When you write a story 50 to 100 years after a man died, you are not going to get the exact same story of what actually took place during that time. Real historians during this time, from 180 to 33 AD, when the time of Jesus, they wrote when it actually happened. Now y'all look real, a real historian, as soon as they see something, the people when 9 11 happened, them folk didn't waste no time. They had all their cameras, they had all their notepads, they was on the radio. Am I right or wrong? I want to deal with it the Book of Mark, which dates back to about 70 AD. The authorship of this book, all right, it was accredited to Mark, but they don't know. This is, this is true, they don't know. Go look it up. Now, Mark, who had been around Peter, and he was Peter's interpreter, wrote down carefully, but not in order, Remember we dealt with chronology? But not in order all that he remembered about the Lord's saying. Why would Peter wait so late to tell his homeboy about what happened with Jesus? Now remember, Peter walked with Jesus. If I walked with a dude that split, I mean, I'm sorry, walked on water. Matter of fact, I walked on water with him, according to the Bible, right? I would have wrote that down, I would have took a picture, I would have did something. I'm just, I'm just saying. Human nature. That's not the case. Peter 
Mark, he told Mark, and Mark wrote it down. Y'all with me? Right. Not only did he write it down, but he wrote it down in around 70 AD. They date the book back. A little now, bit different. Yeah, now, <laughs> remind you, check this out. Mind you, mind you, this is stuff that has been proven through research. Matthew, we can say the same thing, all right? Luke, okay, some scholars place the date of Luke around 80 to 90 AD. Are y'all with me? Right. Because we in 2008 AD right now. Right. All right, so that's even a later date. Right. Now, most of the stuff in Luke is accredited for things that happened in Mark and Matthew's gospel. In other words, a lot of stuff in Luke Somebody went back and checked out what they wrote and said, well, let me write this stuff down. This stuff that's been proven, the same stuff I'm just blabbering out. I want y'all to go home, those who have the internet, and go look up this stuff, what I'm saying. And keep looking it up, and look it up again, and look it up again, and look it up again, and look it up. And we're going to find out how come a, over a 2,000 year time span, Jesus' face keep changing. Because the way he looked today ain't how he looked back then. If he did exist. If he did exist. Right. Now check this out. If I take a picture of you right now, it's going to basically stay the same. You might lose a little weight. <laughs> you know, gain, 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 a, you know, whatever the case may be. But basically, it's going to stay the same. Am I right or wrong? Right. I the I look the same. So, basically... All right. Why is this picture changing? And this, and, 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 and this is, you know, we say, well, image is not everything, you know, because it's all about salvation. I understand that. But when we don't look at things from a historical standpoint, how can we look at things from a spiritual standpoint? Because the historical standpoint of things, of things as we deal with them now, when you leave here today, it will become history. Y'all following what I'm saying? Right. The present becomes history. All right? Why does his face keep changing? All right, now, let's deal with, because I know his time is going by, let's deal with what happened before Jesus the Christ. In order for us to understand what happened with Jesus the Christ, we must understand what happened a little bit before Jesus the Christ and why people believe in what they believe in today. What I'm going to do is to present you some archaeological evidence of a few things. I want you to open your mind. I'm not here to beat up on nobody. I'm a very compassionate person, those who know me personally. I just want you to take a look at it, and I pray that you go home and just open your mind. Just go, you know, read over some things. All right? Um, Casey, thank you so much. You already know what I'm about to ask. Now, remember, the topic at hand, we was talking about the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. Am I right or wrong? Right. All right? Do you want no, let, let, let's pass the, the map out first. I don't want to break that on just yet. Okay? If you got to share with somebody, be a share with somebody, okay? Like I said, I'm trying to bring unity. See, understand something while she's passing this out. Understand something. We have to know why something is so predominant in a certain society. We live in a Christian country where a lot of evil stuff is going on. That right there brings a question mark in my head. How can something like 9-11 happen, but our president could put his hand on a Bible Y'all listening to what I'm saying? And profess certain things. I have a problem with this. All right? Well, she just passed out. Kiss it, give me one while I lose my thought. Basically, I wanted y'all to see the map and, and what I'm looking at. Where all this took place. So you can get a real good view about the stuff that I'm getting ready to tap off into. That I'm trying to stick with my notes, but I got information inside of me that's just going to go ahead and pour on out. So y'all just deal with it. I got my notes, you feel what I'm saying? Might as well just go ahead and spit it on out. As you can see on this paper, you see 
Egypt at the very bottom. Everybody look to the very bottom. And I want everybody to say Egypt. Egypt. All right. Now, anybody that knows anything about Egypt that you can go do your research on, it is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. Before the Greek civilization, before the Roman civilization, keep in mind that the Bible was written in Hebrew and it was written in Greek. Now, when you go do your historical research, to me, in my world, in my studying, there's no such thing as the Hebrew language. Why do I say that? Why do you say that, Gennaro? I say that because when you go through your historical research, you will find out that the language of the Hebrews were nothing but an extension from a people called the Canaanite or Phoenician people. Right, right. These people existed way before any Jew was on the planet. That's true, that's the fact. Yes. Another fact I want you to keep in mind, if you don't believe me, you can go do your own research, and I'm going to keep repeating that. If you notice in the Bible, the introductory of the Bible, it's, it uses the word Lord, it uses the word God, but if you go look up these words in the Hebrew and Greek, some of them are interpreted as Yahweh, right? Some of them, them, some of them are interpreted as El. That's right. Now, different, these different names, okay, have different attributes to them when they're broke down. In other words, what I mean by that, El Shaddai means many-breasted one, but it's got the L in front of it. El Ohim, it means the plural majesty of God. That's the word that's used in Genesis. Like, let us create man in our, you know, in the image of God, in the image of God in our likeness. Well, this us is the Elohim. Where did this God El come from? El was a Canaanite god. It was not originally a Jewish god. That's right. Now check this out. The Canaanites or Phoenicians, they were black. They were of African descent. They were Africans who migrated to this part of the land. Uh, uh, part of the, if you look to the right of this map right here, mm -hmm. the, towards the Jordan, where it say Jordan and Israel, you know, that's the, that's the map that they like to put in the Bible. Right. So that's all you see. These people migrated from Egypt to this part of the world. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. All right? You got to remember, B.C., which means before Christ, these people who ruled at this time in the B.C. were black folks. Right. When you see images of people ruling in the B.C. on the Discovery Channel and you see they white, it's a lie. Did everybody just hear what I just said? I just... Right. You know, just seen some artifacts from Egypt. And they was black as that chair right there. <laughs> All right? So keep in mind when Egypt ruled in the BC, because we broke down what BC was, they didn't just rule Egypt. Right. They ruled the other parts of the world also right. before they were invaded. I was civilized. Are y'all are y'all following what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, let's forward back to the AD, because we're dealing with Turkey. Now, if you look up top, it says Turkey or Asia Minor. If you notice in the book of Revelation, it talks about the seven churches of Asia Minor. Am I right or wrong? That's right. Why? We must understand why. What's so special about these churches? I just broke down to you that the doctrine of the Christian establishment, most of it was done in this part. The man responsible, or the origin, one of the men, I should say, was Paul. 5 AD to 67 AD, before the Gospels. I want to reiterate that. Y'all with me? As you can see to the right of the map, you see Damascus, where he supposedly fell off the horse and God said something to him, and, you know, then he headed his way on down to Turkey. Are y'all with me? Right. Turkey became like the capital of doctrine over a course amount of time. We're going to find out how it became this capital of the establishment of Christology and doctrine as I go on. Is everybody with me? Yes. Yeah. Alright. I'm trying to give y'all a, you know, a good view of this. Now remember, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospel of Thomas that's not in the Bible and all these different books, they wasn't around yet right. when Paul was doing his thing. And he was spreading his gospel that he was spreading about a Christ. Now, if the gospels weren't written yet, what Christ was he talking about? Uh-oh. Right. 
Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Because right. there was no Jesus yet. There was no Jesus. Right. Let me get that one. Yeah. Which one? Yeah, I'm, yeah, y'all. I, I tend to do this. <laughs> Give me that. Y'all about to see me come on out. Go hard. Go hard. Break it on out, though. About to pass this person out. And I'm trying to be, you know, use intellectual etiquette. But it's kind of hard because this stuff makes me mad because this stuff is what deceives people on a day-to-day -day basis. And people base their life on this stuff. Until a Negro like me come along and bust it all up. <laughs> Welcome to the United Kingdom of Amun Ra, where we tell the truth, whether you like it or not. See, we taught that in, in church. Y'all got to excuse me for this because, like I said, I was raised in the church. I'm one of those people that based my life around church at one time. Everything I did was surrounded around church doctrine. All right? Now, tell me when everybody got, got, got a picture. Now, uh, you know, I, I, before we even get to this picture, because we didn't rewind time, then let me break out the Bible. Come on, saints. Got the Bible. Bless God. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. And I know y'all might not have your Bibles, but I'm just going to read the scripture while she's passing that out. And just to let you know that I ain't know nothing crazy, you know, because I don't think he's crazy, he's talking that, that uh, history stuff. You know, let's talk, let's let's read something in the Bible right quick. We're going to open up the good book, as my grandma used to call it. In Acts, and you can write this down, in Acts 7.22, it says, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom, turn to your neighbor and say, all. Aww. The wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. This is the good book that said that. Right. I ain't say that. Right. So by reading that scripture, it sounds like to me the reason why he was mighty in words and his deeds is because he learned something from Africa, Africa Egypt. Now check this out. If you know anything about Egypt, a lot of the students graduated around 40 years old when they went to school in Egypt. And if I'm not mistaken, Moses left around, he was 40 years old. Now, how much of a coincidence is that? Go look it up. Okay? Now, that's back in the day. Uh, we talking B.C. way on down. Y'all following what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Now, let's deal with what happened in the B.C. before we even get to the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D. Let's find out what went on before that. See, B.C. means before Christ. Right? right. Mm -hmm. Well, in the B.C., and I want to say the third century, you had a dude, okay, and, and the reason why I'm so stuck on Egypt is because, see, what people don't understand is author authority started here and it spread out in ancient times. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. People migrated from these areas and went to go rule in other parts right. with the knowledge and the understanding of what went on here That's first. Right. That's right. 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 That's the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ain't got to believe. Go do your research. Right. Right? Yes. We've been here. We have been here. Right. All right? Now, fast forwarding time. We're going to deal with B.C. for a minute. Y'all with me? Oh, yeah. Yes. This dude in this picture that I just showed y'all, this is a man that actually existed. These are actual artifacts that you can go look up yourself. Right. In the Cairo Museum, in the right. British and London Museum, right. in different museums of the world that they still got that they hold as precious. This is a man called Ptolemy Soter. Now, let me tell you all about this man, Ptolemy Soter. If you know anything about your history, you will find out that there was a man who invaded. I don't even want to call him a man. I want to call him a beast because of his actions. 
Alexander the Greek. I would say Alexander the Great, but there was nothing great about him. Right. Okay? He assigned a certain group of generals that he had. Now, mind you, he was a part of the Greek culture. If you know anything about Greek history, you will find out certain things about Greek folk. I don't mean to offend anyone here, but they took pride in homosexuality. You don't believe me? Why don't you go look at some historical artifacts that I've seen that almost made me throw up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like to play. The men like to play with the little boys. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. See, let's deal with the origin of certain things. Uh huh. See, when you go to your African studies in ancient times, we didn't have artifacts, men with men, right. and women with women. That's true. Right. You show me an artifact before any foreign invaders came. It was in our land. Yep. That was in our land. Right. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that I'm going to say this too. All these Europeans that's taking the credit. And I'm not trying to beat up on Europeans. Now, these are facts. Wake up, black folks. Mm -hmm. All the Europeans that have taken credit for the things that we have done. You're not going to do something in somebody else's land before you do it in your land first. Right. Go hard. Yeah. Should have been there first. Yeah. Yep. If you really built this stuff, right. if you really made science and math and things like that, right. Right. you wouldn't have had no dark ages. Right. <laughs> yeah, you had, you had, yeah. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Now, but see, we knew what we was doing. We was doing brain surgery 10,000 years ago. Right. All right, now, this dude right here, Ptolemy Soter. Alexander the Great, he assigned these generals to different parts of the world. When he finally grew some guts and his population of his people increased, they started to invade. Now, mind you, there were other invasions before the Greek invasion, because the Romans whooped their butt. But we're going to talk about the Greek invasion first. Now, what he did was he said, you know what, we're going to come from up here, okay? So this is where they were. They was up here in the polar regions. Turn to your neighbor and say polar regions. Oh, where, where it's cold, you can't plant no food. Right. Ain't nothing popping. Right. <laughs> Ain't no agriculture going on. You can't grow no food. You can't, you know, you got, it's dark. The sun ain't shining too hot over there. When they finally got their population up, they invaded certain parts, and they penetrated their way down, and they got to Egypt, because it's at the tip of Africa. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This happened around 300 B.C., before Christ. But Ptolemy Soter, Alexander the Great said, he took his homeboys, and he was like, yo, we finally got through. I want you to go over there, I want you to go over here, and I want you to go over here. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sew this thing on up. One of his homeboys was Ptolemy Soter. Ptolemy Soter was in charge of Egypt. Right. Now, when Ptolemy Soter, because I'm trying to paint y'all a picture, when Ptolemy Soter got to Egypt, now mind you, Egypt had had hundreds of rulers before this invasion. Right. In other words, we had already ruled for thousands of years right. before this invasion took place. They came, Johnny, come late. We were ancient. Yeah. So, therefore, when he came, Ptolemy Soter, he looked at Egypt, and he was like, what in the hell going on? What is all this stuff y'all got going on? What is this triangle over here? He didn't know what a triangle was, but what is this over here? <laughs> what is this over here? What is this over here? And y'all know that when somebody come and invade, they're not nice people. When a robber break in your house, he don't come to be your friend. So they probably was raping the African women. That's right. They probably were, you know, molesting the kids, because that's what they did. Yeah. And they probably was raping the men, too. Is, yeah. yeah, okay? I'm just, you know, using a little common sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, all these great monuments that I've never seen, right. how did y'all do this? Yeah. Where did this stuff come from? Right. He said, you know what? I'm in control now. Y'all need to show me what's up. <laughs> 
Y'all need to show me what time it is because all this stuff that I see going on, I want to know about this stuff. Why is this big statue of this big, this big man right here? I want a statue like that.